Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Dunzo Laurel Accountancy Tutorial. Here we deal with all our lessons and from the practical point of view. So this is to encourage um, our students or viewers that are interested in taking accountancy as a career to have a feel of what goes on in the real um, accountancy practice environment. By the end of today's lesson, um, you will understand how to treat income and expenditure items in the accounts. You also learn how to identify debit and credit accounts eh, from the above. That is, which account will be debit account and which will be credit account. Then we do the accrual and prepayment. Then we we'll look into depreciation, how this is treated in accounts. We we'll look at double entry and posting. We have a bit of a practice of how to prepare double entries, making sure that every debit has got a corresponding um, credit and vice versa, and how to do the physical posting. By the time we finish doing this, we we'll now close up the account, ledger accounts, make sure we bring down the, the Closing balances as they will be represented in the account. Then, the finally, we will um, extract our balance from these particular uh, balances. Now, let's move on. On the screen here is um, expenditure, the debit account. Actually, we'll be looking at income and expenditure here whether they are capital or revenue. Capital or revenue expenditure will be um, those items that will affect the period, the current period that are charged to the account and those that will be capitalized uh, in the balance sheet. So if you follow this chart, you will be able to um, treat um, the revenue and capital expenditure without knowing it. It goes like the, by, by default, you have actually uh, dealt with the capital and revenue uh, expenditure. So let's move on. Expenditure that are fully consumed or used in the business are all expensed in the profit and account uh, in the period they are incurred. So we have fully used and then partially used. So as I said, the fully used will be expensed immediately to the income statement in the period they incurred. All right. These are revenue expenses, things like light and heat, insurance, refreshment, which is to do with um, tea, biscuits, uh, milk, and honey you buy for the office canteen. Like I'm having my enjoy my tea on my table here. So those are called refreshment. They will be expensed immediately in the year period they are. Um, incurred. So the partially um, uh, incurred expenditure will be those expenditure that have a portion that is really used or benefited the business immediately and those the other portion that will benefit the business in the future. So where this is the case the used part here will be expensed again into the income statement that's from us account and the unused part will be treated differently. So here we have two used part when it's fully used, used portion of the um, of the partially um, incurred expenditure. So all this portion here will be used and will charge to the income statement in the period they are incurred. The unused part, as I said, will then be treated in two ways. The first part with probably those that will benefit the company within one year will be treated as a current assets. Why the unused part that will benefit the company uh, over more than one year will be treated as a non-current asset. The notes here one and one shows that these are the used parts and are dealt with immediately that charge the problems account in the period they are incurred. The note two 
was to do with the unused part, which will be split into two again, that is note three, which show the those benefit falling due within one year, and note four, those the benefit falling due after one and one year. And after this, we now move into the income and and income part of this income and expenditure and let's lesson. So let's go through the notes because the income we covered in the note. Note one is expenses incurred have and fully used. Okay, that's note one. Incurred and fully used are charged to the income statement charged for a GDI. To the income statement that the property loss account of the period incurred, e.g., light and heat. Note two, here we deal with expenses paid in advance, e.g., rent. The unused portion are capitalized and, you know, in the statement of financial position and later charged to the income statement. That is the note two here, this particular one, the unused part. Note three, is to do with those expenses for which the benefit will flow within one year. This are stated as current asset. That's note three here. So, example, typical example is prepayment. You know, when you pay for rent, and maybe the other portion will be due for next period or like next year, and they'll be treated as prepayment in the accounts and on that current asset. Note four. We'll be dealing with um, those expenses for which the benefit will flow for over one year are treated as non correct assets, e.g., property, plant, and equipment, motor vehicle, building, um, and other investments. These ones will be stated in the financial statement of financial position as non correct assets. So they are capitalized as non correct assets. Now let's look at this is to do with um, expenditure. Now let's look at um, income. Income that we represent the debit account as uh, expenditure are all debit accounts. So everything we just stated here will be carrying debit balances. Okay. So income will be those that carry credit balances. So as for income, the treatment of income mirrors that of expenditure. So the way we're going to treat income will mirror the way we treated expenditure. Very close. So um, when it is <coughs> incurred, when income that ends for the period, as end for the period will be recognized in the account in the period they are uh, incurred, uh, end. So income in, uh, ends for a period are fully recognized in the income statement for that particular period. So it invariably telling us that those that are not earned in that period, though receipt have been made now, those will be capitalized into the future, deferred. So income received or payment received in the period, but for the future delivery is capitalized accordingly. So when the, uh, the delivery or the, the it will be when it will be actually delivered within one year, so it will be treated as current deferred income. But while while those that will be delivered over one year, it will be treated as non-current deferred income. So they mirror the same way we treat um, the expenditure. So go through this, all right, and then you appreciate. Um, by the time you go to them several times, they begin to flow and you know begin to make sense to you. If not now, but I'm sure you're following what I'm saying. Okay. If you have any problem, please let me know, and I will kind of um, give you more explanation. I hope you're enjoying it, and I hope you're liking it. Please continue to like. Hope you've subscribed. Very important and please share this lesson. So we can go back and check now. We've done um, how to um, treat income and expenditure items. We've done that. I can say okay to that. 
Now, the next thing to do is uh, we, to uh, how to identify debit and credit accounts from the above. So let's move on to that. Debits, default debit and credit accounts. What I mean by default is by me calling an account name, you should be able to tell whether that account will be a debit account or a credit account. So if you see an account that should be a debit account and in front of you it is showing credit balance, you know there's something wrong. That kind of that account will be you know kind of flag for investigation. So expenditure generally will create a debit account. As I've shown you here, as I've shown you here, expenditure will create a debit account balances. The mnemonic dealer will help us with this. Income will create credit account balances. As I said, the mnemonic dealer will help us. D-E-A-L-E-R. So let's take it one by one. And this uh, mnemonic really cover all area of the accounts in the company uh, business. So D will cover the area of payment to for running the business, like the dividend paid to shareholders, drawing uh, paid to owners, like a uh, social and partnership, salaries and wages and uh, pay to staff so d represents those area of payment to owners and then um, labor forces so e cover the uh, expenses generally with the exception of those that have been uh, specifically categorized elsewhere these are like and hate insurance You'll be for stationaries here right under below the sheet stationaries if you are for food items like um, tea sugar milk and honey biscuits mm -hmm. which some people call them refreshments sugar biscuits which you uh, put in the office canteen these are called refreshments they will be housing debit balance as well now a go to assets asset is a major portion of the business account every asset acquired okay we hold debit balances okay whether they are for short term or for long term assets generally we hold debit balances now let's go to income that will create credit balances what are which form do they take L stands for liability, and liability is a bigger is, is a major area of the financial statement in, in, uh, in the statement of financial position. Liability in terms of loan, in terms of creditors, okay, in terms of accruals, all these are liabilities, and will be shown in the as credit balances in the balance sheet statement of financial position. E cover the ownership. Of the business, so equity will be part credit balance, in, whether it is ordinary share or preference share. This account will be credit balances. Capital account where it is unincorporated businesses, okay, like sole trader and partnership. Any money put into the business will be in the capital account, and they will be uh, holding cap uh, credit balances. The last one here, R, covers the main reason of existence to earn income. Main reason for be, uh, operating uh, a business. That's the aim to add value. So if you are in the retail industry, you will have a turnover. Or if you are like an estate agent, you have a commission for, what you're, for work. If you are like a professional, like um, a lawyer, solicitor, accountant, Okay, accountancy business, architects, you will earn fees for your work. There are other forms or term, terms used for income coming to the business. Whichever term they are used, this particular um, name or account will be in credit balance.
So this is the way to identify if an account will hold a debit balance, DEA for the expenditure area, and LER for the income area. Okay, so look at this and think about them. I'm sure you will, it will resonate with you why they are debit and why they are credit balances. So let's move on to the next item, which is accrual and prepayment. This normally comes up when one is doing the end of the month routine, preparing to perform the end of month routine. All this will come under that uh, uh, um, routine. Accrual and prepayment and depreciation all come under that. So what's accrual? Accrual is simply identifying the expenses incurred in a period in order to match it against the revenue they have and to generate. So the matching concept. It is accrual because it's the expenses which you have incurred, but for which the invoice has not actually been received. So you have to prepare and provide for this. Otherwise, the profit of the business will be overstated and then higher tax will result from this. Prepayment is, is the other way, which is paying for services in advance of use. If you do this, you will need to account or adjust for prepayment at the end of the period so that the account that made you, the payment is made for will not be overstated at the end of the period with those items that the benefit has not been earned. A typical example again is rent, where you pay rent in advance, you go to prepare, remove the portion that you have not used from the rent account so that only the portion that is used is charged to the account. Otherwise, you will be overcharging your account and, and this can be front on by the revenue because that will be actually beating down your tax for that period. So let's look at an example, Akura, which is um, providing for benefits in your favors. Say you expect a telephone usage bill to amount to 250 to date. So how do you provide for this if you have not received the invoice? The first thing to do is to prepare the journal entry. You debit the receiving account, as I always say, receiving account is an account that is receiving the benefit, telephone account is receiving, and credit the account that is given. Okay. If the account has been paid, uh, uh, paid, you credit the bank account. If it doesn't be paid, you credit the, 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 uh, the, the supplier. But where the invoice has not been received, you have to credit an account term accrual in accounting. So here, the bill has only received, so we have to accrue for that particular telephone bill we, we estimate we have used. So the debit will go to the telephone account 250, and the credit will go to the Accrual account 250. As I always say, I encourage students go for the debit first. So we go for the telephone account. Here, we debit it with 250. And we note that it is going to be accrual account. That's what we are providing for telephone. So accrual will be credited. So the credit will now go to accrual account, which is here. We credit to accrual account. Once this is done, we can now move on to the next one. It's accrual done. Next example is to do with the prepayment. Let's do with prepayment. As I said to you, prepayment is merely, you know, when purchases are made or are paid for in advance, okay, and are not been used in that particular period. Mm -hmm. This example to clarify is here. For example, say rent is 500 pounds net of VAT at 20% per month, but the landlord requires uh, three months to be paid in advance. So an immediate payment of 1,500 net of VAT will be necessary. So what we now have to do is to prepare the journal entry. We debit rent account that is receiving three lots of 500, 1500. 
Well, we debit VAT again because we won't debit VAT in the accounts as a, as a VAT register uh, business. We don't include VAT in the uh, accounts. We only create an account for the customer exercise where we will now reconcile at the end of the period whether we need to pay or we need to reclaim from the customer exercise. In this case, we will need to claim this eventually. So we debit them to 300. I will now credit the bank the total amount that some of these two uh, 1800 for the payments. So the debit to be done first, we go to rent account. Rent account here, we debit it with a rent 1500. Okay, I can put a number here that is two times 500. Memo account. Okay. Less. All right. One minute. Just make sure I, I like tidying up the account so. Make it smaller. All right. One minute. Okay. So that was the lower I can make it. I want to make sure that we don't we can see the memo separately and the whole account title fully. We know that's rent account anyway. So two times 500 and three times 500, I beg your pardon, is 1500. So now we debit the VAT again. This is to do with rent. And we say it's going to bank. And it's to do with rent. Then we debit the VAT the, with the VAT element of it, which is 20% uh, uh, of um, 1500, 300. Then you can, you can do that if you want to. It was 1.5 times 20 percent times 0.2. Okay, I want to show it as a text. All right, so that's it. Show it as a text. I'll make it smaller again. All right, that's it. So that's memo. All right, VAT account. Okay. So it is um, 300. Then we now credit the bank account with the 300 plus 1500, which is 1800. Um, payment made to the landlord. Bank account, okay. That's rent. We're saying that that's to do with rent. Then the next portion we need to pay is the 300. So these two together gives us the um, 1800, which we have to credit the bank for the payment. So that's it for the uh, rent payment. Assuming this is the only, assuming rent is the only uh, payment made in the business. Assuming rent, let's ignore the items we've been doing so far. The rent, the trial balance will look like this. This is an extract from a Sage account trading on this particular lesson. So as you can see, bank is 1800 as already seen before here. Where is it? 1800. Yes. Here, that's it. And then the next line is purchase task control account, which is very, uh, just a VAT account. It's 300 debit. And the rent account is 1500 debit. So all the expense accounts are debit. All the expenditure accounts are debit. Let's move on. The next thing to do is to now post the prepayment. Why do we have to do this? 
it's obvious that um, the rent is showing 1500 here, but it should be because it's for a month, so it should be only 500. So if we don't do the prepayment, we'll be overstating our rent account. So the prepayment is to eliminate the payment for the future out of the rent account and then um, you know kind of have a liability a, a, a debtor in account a debtor for rent it's very important this is done as a student if you pay in advance your landlord and probably the next semester you move your property to find a better one maybe closer to your university you might demand the landlord is owing you for those periods you have not stayed if you are paid for them in advance so that's why we have to recognize the debtor in our book right so to do the prepayment how to do it i'm going to show you now you have to debit prepayment the two portion that's two lots of 500 you know debit it, that's 1000 and credit rent account with that 1000 so that the net effect in that rent account will be only 500. So let's go to prepayment and debit prepayment accounts. Okay, prepayment is here. We debit it and two lots of 500, 1000, and we credit our rent accounts. Credit our rent account, two lots of 500, which is now, um, which is uh, 1000. So that we effectively bring our rent down to 500. So that's done for prepayment. That's one of the month end routine. So let's look at the position, which is another month end routine. We don't do the position every, every day, we do it periodically in business. So the position of the requirements, uh, according to IS 16. This is to recognize the, the systematic allocation of the appreciable amount of an asset over a useful life. So one has to recognize this fallen value, okay, over the useful life of the asset and charge them to the income statement. That's a typical example of when expenditures are, uh, is an expense. That's a way of uh, accounting for the use uh, portion of the asset. That will charge in the account. The unused part is capitalized and will be in the balance sheet. As you reduce that by charging income statement with the use part, okay, the, on, the other part will be falling in value. The net book value will be reducing. So let's look at the method, which is the important thing here. I know FISA said uh, how to be re registered in the book. You know, we have fixed asset register, okay, where you put the, the name of the asset, the, uh, the serial number, the date of purchase, the, VAT, the rate of uh, depreciation, and the location of the asset, those are things that will be in the fixed asset register. But the physical uh, um, accounting we have to look at. So the depreciation can be in straight line, sum of digits, reducing balance, and then declining balance method. It depends on the method uh, an organization wants to use you have to be consistent and stick to one particular method. Step line is allocating the uh, the depreciation on the asset over a fixed rate of, on, on the cost of the asset. So if it's like, for instance, uh, for five years and uh, four years, that is a 25% um, depreciation rate. It's five years, that's 20% depreciation rate. So this looks this is the five years depreciation, uh, four years, I say we did 25% uh, straight line um, method. So 25% on 10,000 is 2,500. And that at the end of the year one, reduces the asset to 7,500. In year two, 125% on the cost, we knock off another 2,500 from the asset, making it 5,000 net book value at the end of year two. Bring that forward to year three at 5,000, another percent on cost, not on the net book value, on cost, okay, we bring the asset down to around 2,500. That 2,500 in the beginning of year four, and that charge of 2,500 in that particular year four 
is going to get a value to nil at the end of year four. This is a straight line, which is always charged on the cost of the asset. Reducing balance pragmatic is charged on the net book value, but not the cost. At the beginning, the net book value, which is cost, is 10,000. So that's why the five percent is charged in that particular year. Okay. The next year, the 20% will be on the 2,500. 7,500, not on 10,000. That's why the charge is only 1875, and so on and so forth. So that's how it, the amount charge will be reducing gradually over the period of time. So let's look at an example uh, using a straight line method. Example four. Company acquired car wash machine CWM at 5,000 XVAT 25%. Okay. We need to post this asset in the book and account for depreciation, which is over 10 years. That's 500 pounds per annum. The cost, we have to debit the asset. Car wash machine, the 5,000. We debit VAT, 1,000, that's 20% on that cost. And then the total, 5 plus 1, will be credited to the uh, payable because we have not paid for it. So go to the asset again, look for here in front of us, debit it with the cost, 5,000. Then we look for the additional account, uh, VAT account, sorry, and debit it again with um, 1,000. VAT account is here. Okay, that's to do with car wash, 1,000. Then the two items, which is 1,000 plus 6,000, and 5,000 will be 6,000 will be credited to the payable account, which is here. Okay, that's payable account. The cost is 5,000. The VAT on that, which we have to pay to the, uh, the supplier, so the total is 6,000. So that's the cost there to it. So let's look at the depletion aspect of this. So it is a 500 per annum, that is a, a 10 years life. So 5,000 divided by 10 is 500 per annum. But mind you, we are dealing with the month accounts here, not the year. So we have to divide this 500 by 12 to get the charge for the month. So we now debit the official account in the income statement. That amount, let's look for the division in income statement, which is here. We debit it again. That is the memo is here. That's the 500 divided by uh, 12, which is 41.6, round it up to 42 pounds. I will now credit the division in the balance sheet, which is the for the asset, which is here, and uh, the depreciation account. Okay, equipment depreciation here. And I will debit it with uh, 542 pounds. Remember, at the beginning of the um, business, the accounts that the, the likely account for the business must have been configured. So that's why we have all these accounts already uh, in the system. So you have to configure all the accounts that likely account that the company will be using. All right. So that's why we have them ready for posting. When it's new, we need to create it again, but with an authority from the uh, higher uh, officer. We don't create an account without um, authority from the from your boss, okay, in real life. Otherwise, everybody will create an account willy nilly in the business. So we've posted everything now, I think. All the debit and credits have been done. I can now confidently say, go to our uh, learning outcome. We have done that, okay. We've done accrual and prepayment, okay. We've done depreciation, okay. We've done the posting, double entries. We've done that, okay. And then we need to close off the account. Very important. Let's go through how to close off the account. You can start methodically. If you just posted the account, we go. We look at the accrual, the first one here. Okay. You have to uh, post what I call a memo. Uh, balance, extra the memo balance for all the debits and the credits. So you need to know whether uh, the, the, whether they um, they are equal. 
if you post the name or you can see here that the debit is uh, the credit is 250 nothing on the debit side so mean that we need an an account a balance here on the debit side for the both side to agree so you put that difference here okay which is called the carry down balance 250. now that we put the difference we now check again close the balance to see if it's not really agreeing yeah 250 250. all right so in account whatever you put in debit side you bring it over to the credit side okay. so that shows that and the account is in credit so the balance here is now and uh, closing balance is 250. so accrual is showing the 250 and balance credit by default now for the prepayment again we quickly do the same memo find the memo balance which is 1000 debit not on credit so it means that we, the account is actually a whole debit figure balance so we put the figure here to close it up to the uh, credit side. So we make sure that um, they are now agreeing one thousand one thousand. So this is correct. So we now bring it down here as a debit figure and close the balance, carry forward. So that balance, you know, carry forward one thousand prepayment is debit debtor in the balance sheet. So we look at the telephone again. We do the memo. It's two fifty on the debit, debit side. This means that telephone is actually debit, but let's see the diff actual difference. Okay, that's it. Carry it down 250. Now I bring it to the debit side here. Okay. First of all, close it to make sure it's okay. That's okay. Then we bring the good carry forward figure. Debit 250 telephone account. Rent account again. We do the memo to see what the balance will look like. Fair to the memo. Ah. Is 150, 1,500 on debit and 1,000 on the credit. So let's find what, why, how, by how far the debit is more, is by 500. So this will come to the debit side after we check the balance to make sure it's correct. 1515 now. So we now bring it down here uh, as 500. VAT account again, let's do the same thing. 1, 3 here, that's a debit balance. It's likely debit balance. So we put the difference here. Okay, check to see his closing balance is same 1300. Now we bring the daily balance here um, as a carry forward figure. Now 1300. The appreciation we do the same thing. So the credit figure here that is uh, we bring it down to the debit okay, because it's as a closing figure here. So it's debit in the depression in the performance account. Bank account, we do the memo to see what it is like. All right. So it's 1800 on the credit side. So it means the bank with nothing on the credit side, debit side. So it's going to be a, a credit balance of uh, 1800. So bring the credit side here. After we check the balance to make sure it's correct. 18, 18, then we bring it down here to the credit balance. I hope the manager or the company has an overdraft arrangement with the bank, otherwise, they might be charged for this. So, the position in balance sheet, we close off again, get the memo 15, 5000 on the debit side, and then we start the difference here. So, we now check to make sure that it's okay 5500. So we bring down the debit to the debit side now. So the uh, account, fixed asset account, is a debit balance of 5,000. Look at the payable, same thing, check the memo. 6,000 on credit side. Put it inside the difference here, or carry it down, and then check, make sure it's balancing 6, 6, then we carry forward the credit balance, 6,000. Equipment depreciation, again, we do the same thing. That's how to close the account. You must do all this, add up all the debit and all the credit to know where the difference is, what or what difference is, and insert it in the right place. The account, the side that needs it, then you check that and bring it down on the opposite side. That's how to do it. So this is a credit balance for the accumulated decision for the equipment. So we've actually closed off all the accounts and we now need to um, 
extract the balances. Okay, if everything is posted correctly, the trial balance should balance. Or if everything is extracted again, the trial balance should balance. So let's start extracting the trial balance now. We we'll start methodically from the first one, which is the let's see the first one is um I suppose accrual. Okay, accrual the first one which is 250 credit. Repayment is next one, which is water debit. So let's go on. So do the first one, accrual 250 credit. Next one I saw what prepayment one thousand debit. So let's go to the next one. Telephone two thousand debit by default is an expense, it's debit balance. Rent by default should be debit balance. VAT could swing from debit to credit depending on the collection or on payment. Depression considered is debit balance. Bank account can switch from debit to credit depending on payment and receipts. Equipment cost is always a debit balance by default. Remember assets in dealer. Car wash depreciation, uh, car wash depreciation account, accumulate the balance sheet is credit balance. Account payable by default is a credit balance, liability. So let's close off and see if it's okay. Wow, they are okay. As a matter of fact, on the left hand side here is an extract from the Sage account on this particular training. As you can see, it's um, 80, 80, 91.67. That must be the 41, which are rounded up to 42 here. All right. So everything has been posted properly. And then if you now check, if you put it, there will be nothing to uh, insert, no difference. And if there's any difference, that should go to the source first account. For argument's sake, if our rent, if our rent is um, 5,000 as opposed to 6,000, you will see a difference will come automatically to the source account of 1,000. That's the short fall from rent account and uh, payable account. This will be carried in the social account until an investigation 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 is made, and then we identify where the error is coming from. And then once you find that, you now reverse the entry. So if you find out that it's the payable account that is wrong, okay, then I will now credit uh, uh, Credit and um, account payable account with 1000 and debit social account 1000 so that 1000 will disappear. It could be the other way again. It could be, say, for instance, the equipment is 4000 uh, erroneously posted at 4500. There's 500 shortfall, which will be to debit side of the social account. This again will be um, posted in, uh, carried in social account until invest investigation is made and the account restated or Adjustment made to correct the error. So let's correct that again. So that's it. And um, as it has been debited with uh, 5,000 and such I can create it with 500 and the error disappeared. So let's now close off again. So the account balance, that entire balance for you. So if you're happy with this particular exercise we've gone through, please again give us a like, thumbs up. Subscribe again. I keep pressing. You must subscribe. Okay. I don't to take a finger and press the subscription button now. That's how you can encourage us to continue producing things like this for your benefit and consumption. Please share again for others to um, enjoy and receive the benefit of this particular lesson. Until then, um, next lesson, take care of yourself and I'll see you. Bye for now.